Okay, hello everybody. Welcome to Korean Atlanta Mentorship. And in this video, we're going to create a velocity banking spreadsheet from scratch. And you might be asking, hey, didn't you do this in another video? And I'm like, yeah, well, for two reasons, I'm creating this video again. Uh, number one is that it helps the YouTube algorithm to kind of create the same content over and over again. Number two, uh, repetition is the mother of all learning, right? So don't ever disrespect uh, doing the basics over and over again, because that's how you become an uh, advanced uh, ninja master, right? And that's what I'm trying to become right now. So um, here, I just have the two steps in doing velocity banking. It's really easy. All you have to do, for number one, is create a budget. And then number two is select your operating account, which will be a line of credit. So here, um, I have a blank uh, Excel spreadsheet. Um, you can get a uh, use a free version of Excel online. Go to live.com, or you could use the Google uh, Gmail spreadsheet. Um, so it it doesn't matter. There's this way to create get a free uh, blank spreadsheet, and then you can play around with this. Okay. So first thing we have to do is create a budget, and I always like to put average American right here. And we're gonna have two versions. We're gonna have the average American budget, and then the velocity banking budget. So first thing we need is to figure out what our income is, right? Income, you call this income or paycheck. And then we next thing is we have to figure out our expenses. And then last thing is we figure out our savings, right? Now, I'm going to just do a little bit of, of uh, formatting here. So we're going to make sure that everything here uh, is formatted to show currency. So let's go ahead and do that, OK? And we're going to put $5,000 of income here. I just like to use that number because that's kind of the average number. And then uh, $3,000 of expenses. And then this will be $2,000 of savings. Now let's kind of color code this to kind of make this easier to read. So income, I like to make green because money is green. Expenses, I like to make red because expense is bad. Savings, I like to make blue because savings, uh, blue, I guess, is kind of neutral. Right. And then, so let me just do this. We're going to highlight this and make this our expenses. After we've done our expenses, now we have to do essentially an expense breakdown. Okay. So expense breakdown. Now, why is it important to do an expense breakdown? Uh, well, basically, um, when we do our expense breakdown, we can see what's eating up our cash flow. So what's really important when doing the expense breakdown is making sure that we list every single debt as its own line item. So I'll say debt one, debt two. So it could be a credit card. It could be some kind of a loan. Um, and we could put other things too that aren't expenses like the rent or, or, or that aren't debt expenses. So the rent is not a debt. Um, and then other things like uh, food, insurance, uh, utilities, et cetera, et cetera, right? So... Let me do that. Okay, so we got that here. And so let's just kind of list our debt. So I'll say student loan, right? And then we have a $10,000, 10K balance, 6% interest rate. And then we'll say that the monthly payment is $400 a month, right? I think that's the average. Again, I like to use the same figures over and over again. Um, and so now here we're going to do an auto loan. So uh, auto loan here, this will be a $13,000 balance. And then we're going to say that it's $600 a month. Okay. Right. And so now what we have to make sure is that when we're doing our expense breakdown, it actually equals this number 3000. So we're going to put $400 here. Right. And actually, let's just do this to make the color coding the same. Okay, so $400 a month here, $600 a month there. We'll say the rent is $1,000, although that may not be realistic these days because the rent's a little bit too high. And the everything else, food, insurance, utilities, we'll say it's $1,000. So as you can see, $1,000 plus $1,000 plus another $1,000 here, that will equal $3,000. And now we have our savings, okay? So that's $2,000. Now, what we do is we create another column that's very similar. And we'll call it Velocity Banking. Or we could call it Velocity Banking American. That might be a little bit better. And 
So what we're going to do is we're going to kind of create the same budget, and but we're going to tweak our method of operation because we're going to do it the velocity banking way. So our income is still there at 5000 And actually, let me go ahead and copy this formatting. So the income is 5000 right? Now, expenses, we're going to uh, modify. So let's just hold on to this. And with savings, with the way that we do velocity banking, the savings is essentially going to become zero. OK, now we've essentially we're kind of almost done with step one and then we're going to go to step two and kind of go back to step one again. So we need to select our operating account, which is a line of credit. Now, you may be asking, like, well, what's a line of credit? Well, a line of credit is simply a financial tool where you can borrow money, pay it back and reuse it over and over again. Right. So if you have a credit card, you know exactly what a line of credit is. But there's different types of lines of credit, like personal lines of credit business lines of credit, home equity line of credit. For this example, we're gonna use a personal line of credit. And so if this person has good credit, uh, we're just gonna say, okay, well, let's say, you know, um, let's just do this. So available uh, limit, we'll say this person has $25,000 available, kind of like a credit card. And the bank says, and you get you get these from banks or credit unions, and they say, okay, well, you can use, uh, you can use simply, uh, certainly use our money. You have good credit. You're making five thousand dollars of income. You're allowed to use twenty five thousand dollars of what we call this personal line of credit, and this is our main operating account that we're going to use for velocity banking. And I'm going to put um, balance here, right? So it's kind of like the credit, the the line of credit balance, like a credit card balance, and what we're going to do, so here's the strategy. We put our, in, instead of using our pay, checking account, which is how the average American does things, pay our bills from our checking account, we're going to pay our bills from our line of credit. We're going to put our entire paycheck into the line of credit and then pay our bills from the line of credit. And you'll see how we have a lot more flexibility into, into um, our financials when doing it this way. Right, and we're gonna be able to pay off debts quickly. We're gonna free up cash flow. There's a lot of benefits that that I go into. In fact, if you want a better explanation, since this is more uh, focused on creating a spreadsheet, go click the Velocity Banking 101 video link down below, and then come back here if you want to practice creating a spreadsheet. Okay, so let's just do this. So we have a line of credit. Now you're thinking like, okay, well this has a zero balance. You no, know, what's the point of this? Well, basically, what we're, the whole point is to free up cash flow, and one of the easiest ways to, to, to free up cash flow is to simply transfer debt to our line of credit if we're able to do so, if it makes sense to do so. So we have a $10,000 student loan here, a $13,000 auto loan here. Okay, well, we have a $25,000 line of credit, so what if we just do this, right? So what if I just transfer this 10 and this 13 to here, so that's 23,000. So let's just put that here, $23,000 balance on this um, line of credit. And so what happens? Well, this goes to zero. Actually, let me do this. Let me copy the formatting. Okay. So this goes to zero when we transfer that balance to the line of credit. This goes to zero. Now our rent stays the same. And all our food insurance utilities, they all stay the same too. But guess what? Our expenses magically decreased to $2,000. They magically decreased just by doing a simple debt transfer, right? And so now we have $3,000 of cash flow. So 5,000 minus 2,000, that's 3,000, right? And so the strategy is, is you're gonna put 5,000 here. So you put your paycheck here, the balance is gonna go 18,000. Now, eventually the balance is gonna go up 2,000. So it'll go up 20,000. So all we have to do to calculate that for the next month's balance is just simply do uh, J2, or I'm sorry, J2 minus the cash flow, which is $3,000, right? Because 5,000 minus 2,000 is $3,000. And then we just rinse and repeat, right? And then this goes to zero. And let's see how long it takes us. So I'm gonna put interest here and I'm gonna put month here. And I always say the first month is month zero. And there'll be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So this is going to take us about seven months to wipe out $23,000 of debt. Now you take a look at the average person when they see like a $23,000 of debt, 
even if they have like $2,000 of savings, for some reason, they just can't fathom, hey, I can get rid of this debt uh, really quickly and still maintain control and flexibility of my, my income, right? Because if I dump all my income here at any point in the process, because I have um, an available balance or available limit in the credit line, if I have emergencies, okay, so what? I'll just take another month or two to pay off the balance of the loan, right? You have a lot more flexibility there. Now, one thing we had, do have to calculate is the interest, right? So the interest, uh, because we're using other people's money, they're going to charge us. The, I don't know uh, in any instance, maybe someone very generous where it allows to use their money uh, without any interest. But if, if, it's some, if the tool is coming from a, a bank or credit union, they're certainly going to charge us interest. And so to calculate or estimate the calculation of interest, what you do is you take the last month's balance multiply by the interest rate, which is 15%, and then you divide by 12. So let's just do that here. So equals J2 uh, times 0.15 divided by 12. And some people don't know this, but the interest rate is quoted annually. And because you're taking the monthly interest, you divide by 12. Now, this is technically wrong because the interest is actually calculated by the average daily balance BP, but because in this example, we don't know the exact date when expenses are occurred, uh, monthly interest is good enough. So let's just go ahead and calculate that. Okay, so let's go ahead and sum this up. So to sum up this column, you just click this auto sum button right here. All right, and now let's just open this up. So we see that in about seven months or so, we'll just say eight just to add the interest here, uh, we see that we're able to pay off $23,000 of debt, maintain our cash flow, and kind of minimize the interest, right? So um, we paid off $23,000 of debt in, in eight months. Amazing. And I didn't even sweat in this. And here's the thing. Here's the cool thing about doing velocity banking. Um, if I'm a little bit off on my numbers, let's say one month, um, I spend a little bit more, That that's okay. Because next month I might spend a little bit less. So uh, for me, I like to approximate the budget. I don't get you know sweat over um, you know if I'm off like one dollar off or not. But in certain instances, if you let's say overpay a loan directly with your savings, you have to be exact with those numbers because when you overpay with savings, that money's not liquid anymore. But if you overpay on a line of credit, you can use that money whenever you want. Just be a little, be responsible, right? But again, some people say, hey, just put all your savings into low. You don't need this line of credit nonsense. And if you do that, and if you ever you know, get into a $100 issue, maybe, or a $1,000 issue where your car parts have broken down, you can't call the student loan company and say, hey, you know, I want my uh, 1000 you know, I overpay this loan by $2,000. Can you give it back to me? They'll say no, because that's not how loans work. That's how credit cards and credit lines uh, work because you can always reuse what you paid back, right? Now, some people might say, well, you know, if you overpay with the student loan, then uh, why don't you just use your credit card as a backup? Which is different from velocity banking because, again, you're using your checking account here as your main tool, whereas velocity banking, you're using your line of credit as your main tool. Now, why would we not do that? Why would we discourage people from doing it? doesn't mean you can't do that, but why would we discourage it is because it's eventually going to lead to something called segregation of income. The more debts and your payments you have, the more that your income is not as effective as it would if it was just in one place. Now, I'm not going to go into deep explanation on that, but it's essentially why a lot of six-figure earners are paycheck to paycheck. I've talked to many six-figure, well, not many, but a few of you who are six-figure earners and living paycheck to paycheck, and I can just hear in my mind, oh, debt one, two, three, four, five, six, segregation of income. I totally know what your problem is, right? And so with Velocity Banking, we're trying to get rid of our debts, free up our cash flow, and prevent that segregation of income so it just all goes into one place. And we're using our Velocity Banking account, which is the line of credit, as our operating account, okay? So this is me, uh, Korean Atlanta Mentorship, creating this spreadsheet from scratch. You can see how easy it is to create it from scratch. You don't need to know mind-blowing Excel formulas. So try it yourself. Try to resist the temptation of emailing for the spreadsheet, although I don't mind emailing to you. But 
Hope you learn uh, how to create the spreadsheet from here. Use your own numbers. You know, even if you don't have a line of credit, pretend that you would have one. So if you have any questions, comments, leave them down below. Also, I always make a plug for the group. So if you're interested in joining our group, go ahead and click the link down below. Uh, fill out your information and submit it, and we'll reach out back to you. Also, you can email us by going to the About section of the YouTube channel. Find our email address from there. Okay, have a great day, and we will speak next time.